Hello everyone. Today we are going to do class eighth maths chapter number fourteen compound interest. Okay, so yesterday we did fourteen point one exercise question number one we completed that was the find the amount and the compound interest. Okay, so we have completed three questions from question number one. Today we are going to do question number two and question number three. Those are the problem sums. Okay, so first again we will revise the formulas. Formulas for simple interest is this. Okay, formula for the amount or by compound interest. For amount, you have to use this uh, formula that is for compound interest. Okay, and when we get the compound interest, that is, we when we get the amount, we have to use it to find the compound interest. Okay, I hope these formulas are clear to you all. I have given a uh, few examples from the textbook only. That is, fourteen point one examples are being solved. You all can check the description box. The link will be provided over there. Okay, so let's start with question number two. That is, uh, the problem sum. Samir. Samir Rao has taken a loan of twelve thousand five hundred at a rate of twelve percent. Or PCPA for three years. If the interest is compound annually, then how much rupees should he pay to clear his loan? So whatever is been given, first we will jot it down. That is principal, which was P is rupees this much. That is twelve thousand five hundred. Then the rate of interest that is supposed to be R, which is twelve percent or twelve PCPA. Anything you all can write it, okay? And the duration, duration is noted as N, okay? Which is supposed to be three years, okay? Everything has been given in the question, children. See, three years, twelve PCPA. Everything has been given. This you all have to write, which is. compulsory after writing what has been given we have to put the formula for the amount that is p 1 plus r upon 100 raised to n okay so this is the standard formula for finding the amount okay in order to get a compound interest therefore a is equal to p was how much 12500 Okay, so one plus r is twelve upon hundred, and n is supposed to be three. All right. Now a is equal to again write it down. First we will solve the bracket. Here multiplication sign will come because before there nothing is there. Before the bracket there is nothing, so we have to add a multiplication sign. So hundred into one hundred. Hundred plus twelve is going to be hundred and twelve upon hundred raised to three. Okay, so after this, you all don't have to remove the cube of these numbers, children. It will be a very big number to solve. So what trick we can use is a is equal to twelve five double zero into this fraction. We have to write it three times. I will show you. It will become very easy to multiply and divide. One hundred and twelve, sorry, upon hundred. It becomes very easy for us to solve if we do it in this form. Okay. So now the next step is going to be reduce the zeros. Okay. So over here it is one twenty five, ten, ten, and hundred is over here. Okay. So what we can do is we can even reduce this or we can reduce this also. Okay, so this is going to be again. We can reduce it with the table of two. We can reduce it with the table of two, or we what we can do is keep this zero. We will not reduce the zero. We will reduce these two zeros and these two zeros. Okay, so only now hundred and hundred is left. So I'll again write it down so that it will be more clear. Now over here only one twenty five is remaining into one one two. There is nothing over here, so we will take this. Hundred into hundred. Okay, children. This we can reduce it now with the table of two. So how are you going to reduce it? Two fives are ten. Zero as it is. Two fives are ten again. One two six are twelve. Okay. Again we will reduce this. The same answer it will come. That is fifty. And over here fifty six because same number. So we don't have to take much. 
uh, efforts to solve this. Okay. Now what is left? Fifty, fifty, fifty-six into one, one hundred and twelve and one twenty-five. Okay. So what we can do is again reduce it. Now we can reduce it these numbers because we can easily divide it with five. So five ones are five zeros are. Okay, children. So over here again, five twos are ten. Five fives are twenty-five. Okay. Again, we can reduce it. That is five twos are ten. Five fives are twenty-five. Is it clear? Now we cannot reduce it. We will keep it as it is. Okay. So it will be a is equal to this was five into fifty-six into fifty-six into one one two raised to two into we will directly solve this because these two numbers were left so 2 into 50 is going to give us 100 now we don't have to reduce this children why i am not reducing it it will be very easily reduced but why i am not reducing it because if we reduce it it will become uh, while dividing it while multiplying all the numbers and then dividing it, it we will get some decimal points we need a decimal point but the decimal point may vary Okay, so what we have to do is, in order to get a correct answer, try to get hundred ten over here. Okay, at the denominator's place. This is a small trick that I am telling you. Now, what you all have to do is multiply all these numbers together. Okay, and then divide it with hundred. You will get the answer as a is equal to rupees. One seven five six one dot sixty. Now, you, after solving this, you are accurately going to get this number. Or if you divide it, the answer might come right, but at times this decimal point can differ. So at this point, at this point, you all have to keep ten or hundred for dividing it. Okay, we can easily divide it. The answer can come fifty over here, but we don't need fifty. We need ten. Or hundred in order to get the decimal points easily. Okay, we have got our answer. Let's write the conclusion. Children, while solving, if you all are finding anything difficult, please let me know in the comment section. So one seven five six one point sixty two. Clear his loan after. Three years. I hope this problem sum is very clear. It's same as we did yesterday's sum. Let's do the next sum. To start a business, Shalaka had taken a loan of rupees eight thousand at a rate of ten and a half PC. After two years, how much compound interest will she have to pay? Now, compound interest means we have to use compound interest formula. So first, we will write what is P. You all can write it in short form also. That is eight thousand. R is supposed to be ten and a half P C P A. Now, ten and a half means how much, children? Ten point five. We cannot use this fraction for finding the answer. So we will take ten point five instead of half. And what is the n? N is supposed to be two years. I hope this is clear to everyone. Okay, now let's write the formula. A P one plus R upon hundred raised to n, where P was eight thousand one plus ten point five upon hundred raised to two. Okay, so first we will solve the bracket. That is eight thousand will remain as it is. Okay, hundred into one hundred. Hundred plus ten point five is going to be one hundred and ten point five upon hundred raised to two. Now we don't have to remove the square. What trick we have to use? We have to use it twice. Okay, the same answer we are going to get. Okay. Now, after this, what we are going to do is we will reduce the zeros. That is two zeros from here, two zeros from here, one zero from here, and one from here. Okay. So what is left now? Eight into one one zero point five into one one zero point five upon ten. Now, as I said, we have to keep this ten or hundred at the denominator's place in order to get the answer accurately. So what we can do is multiply them. 
okay multiply all these numbers first and divide it with 10 you are going to get your a that is supposed to be 96 sorry 9768.20 9768.20 now we have to remove the compound interest compound interest therefore it will be a minus p so therefore a is rupees 9768.20 minus 8000 it will give us rupees 1768.20 so therefore we will write the conclusion conclusion that is shalaka will have to pay rupees 1768.20 after 2 years. Okay. I hope this exercise is clear to you all. The exercise is over over here children. In the next video we will be solving exercise number 14.2. Okay. So if there is any confusion, any questions regarding this uh, topic, please let me know in the comment section. See you in the next video. Till then take care. Bye.